Welcome to Schmidt List, a podcast on innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Join host Kurt Schmidt, president of Foundry, as he and his guest share valuable insights and strategies. This is the perfect opportunity to explore fresh ideas to improve yourself and your business. Come join Kurt as he interviews this week's inspiring guest. Brent, how are you today? Hey, doing well. How about you? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Yes, absolutely. Appreciate the invite. Uh, so, Brent, tell me about the work you do. Uh, what's your day job and uh, what have you been doing recently? Well, I eat out a living as a uh, financial advisor with Edward Jones. So I like to say that what I do is I sit down with people and learn about the purpose of their money and then help them guide them in making smart decisions to have the money accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. That's great. And uh, and so we're going to talk a bit about networking today, about ideas for people that are either in transition, maybe even passively looking. So what what's your kind of history with networking? Is It's not something that people usually take a college course on. So how did you... <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, how did you become interested and see the value and find the value? Uh, well, it, through my career, obviously, most of what people do is a contact sport, right? So you're always needing to meet people, meet new people for various reasons. And so I've had to do it for transitions in my career. Uh, I've had to do it for professional reasons. And, and it's also a lot of fun meeting new people, learning their story. Get to you hear some fantastic, wonderful things. And learn a lot. That's great. Yeah. And I think most people understand the value of networking, but let's, I want to start with dispelling a myth about networking that I I hear from people, right? Which is, um, it's awkward and it's uncomfortable. A lot of people assume networking is kind of where I go to your hotel meeting room and I put on a, hello, my name is sticker. And I just try to awkwardly interrupt conversations and that's networking. That's what I hear some people have in their mind's eye when they, they think about it. What's your mindset and what advice would you give people when it comes to the mindset of networking? Uh, well, and this, like we've already talked to Parsley's and to the people that are in transition, but it also, you can back it out of there and just in general, I just try to say, don't make networking about a ledger between debits and credits. It's not an extraction process. And don't make it your objective to get something from the other person. How about just sit down and have a conversation, be genuinely interested in the other person, ask questions, peel the onion, right? Ask why, tell me more, that's interesting. Um, And then along the way, ideally, you discover ways that you may be able to help that person or continue the conversation, et cetera. And inevitably, it will probably turn around and the other person will offer to try to figure out a way to help you, right? And just be ready to receive. But don't make that the objective. Make it to connect and learn about the other person. And sometimes, a lot of times, there's a way you can help someone. Well, and, uh, and I apologize because I'm going to play a bit of an antagonist today on our show. So so another argument I hear is, well, why waste time talking to people that don't have jobs when I'm looking for a job? I would call that because you don't know what you don't know about the next person you meet. And we kind of just talked about this, that you can't navigate into a job through the applicant tracking system, right? And companies don't hire people. Companies don't interview people. Companies don't have coffee. Human beings have coffee and interview and say, I'd like you to come aboard with our organization. So you need to be, it, job transition, like networking, is a contact sport. You need to be busy with humans. Yeah, and that's some of the arguments, like I said, because people struggle with where should I be putting my time, Right is that I should be spending most of my time looking for places that have jobs and I should be putting my effort into that because that's what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for Mm -hmm. a job. So I can see why people might think that the idea of meeting with people and talking with people that are not hiring people or they are not a hiring place might seem like it's a waste of time. If I'm a someone that I just met with someone today that was wants to look at leadership role and product management, product direction. And if I'm that person, and that's what I suggested today, is you want to directionally aim your networking 
to meet as many people that look like that, that are already doing it. Because guess what? They're the ones that the recruiters are asking, are you interested in an opening? They're, they're, they're talking to other businesses that all of a sudden have an opening. They know a person that's hiring. They know that someone's going to be leaving. So I just can't emphasize enough that if you're in transition, if the contact sport, yeah. right, right? The key activity is meeting people and connecting with them. And the key tool is LinkedIn. Yeah, let's uh, let's talk about LinkedIn in just a second. One last thing I want to ask you about <clears throat> is the other argument I get, which is I don't have time for networking. And this usually comes from people that already have a job, right? And one thing I've always directed people is just working on your resume. The worst time to work on your resume is when you need to. And the worst time to be working on your network is when you need something. Yep. So talk to me a little bit about your philosophy, Brent, when it comes to you know, how, what would you say to people that say, I don't have time for that. I've got kids, I've got, I've got uh, hockey lessons and I've got piano lessons. How do you, how do, how should I be looking at that? And they're currently employed, right? That's the premise. Yeah. Okay. So then I would say that there's two types of transition. There's a transition from paycheck to paycheck, or there's a transition from paycheck to some combination of emergency savings, severance, unemployment, credit cards, tapping into retirement savings, and then a paycheck. The only way to go paycheck to paycheck is to be active and be talking to people and hearing about the next opportunity before someone else does. Yeah, makes sense. I implore people all the time, you should always know what your market value is. And there's only one way to know for sure, which is to get a new job offer and somebody says, I will pay you this much. That's the only way to know 100% what your market value is. But in order to gauge an idea, to get an idea of where the market is going, and I, I hate to constantly use metaphors, and things, but to get an idea of where the meta, the market is going, you, the only way to find out is talking to other people who are in that market and understand where are they investing in, both uh, with their time, what are they investing their time into, what are they investing their, their emotional <laughs> support in. And it gives you an idea very quickly of where you should be investing as well. And again, as they say, your network is your net worth. And I know it, it rhymes and that's very cute, but it's actually very true. And it's very akin to investing long-term into your career. Because what I've seen too many people do is they focus on a job versus having a career. To your point about paycheck to paycheck, is that if you are not... Um, focused on longer term investment, then don't be surprised if 10, 20 years from now, you have a hard time retiring or finding that next job. So let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn. Now, some of the other things that I've gotten, especially maybe I would say in an older generation, right? They're like, I don't want to connect with people on LinkedIn unless I met them in person. Or they kind of have these old school values around LinkedIn. What's your sort of approach to LinkedIn and networking? And how do you find uh, you can use it best? Well, first of all, I encourage people, if you have tight guardrails on who you accept connections with, you should widen them as possible as you can, right? Because it can't hurt you. You can always unfollow someone. Now, I'm not saying you should accept the connection request from someone that says you are the best candidate for a franchise, but, you know, a, another business professional, it, it just- I only got four you, right? of those while we just start talking here, so it's okay. <laughs> and, uh, and you accept someone's connection. I would call that the circle has started. And I get asked to, would you make an introduction to this person? They see that you're connected. And I don't even tell the person if I am connected or excuse me, if I know them or not, I use that opportunity to what I call close the circle. So my message would be, hey, if you're like me, like meeting new people. I've got this person I'd like to introduce you to. And oh, by the way, we haven't connected in person. Maybe we should do that too. And you know what? A lot of people really like that because you never mm -hmm. know. So and I'll get, we don't need to get into the details, but there is a huge value in having more connections if you are looking, whether you're employed or not, because the algorithm for the recruiter app is based on the person doing the searching, not based on the results. And having those connections is an influencer. Yep. And I've talked to about this before on the show a number of times, Is that, and people are usually surprised, but 80% of LinkedIn's revenue comes from the recruiter platform. That's huge amount of where their resources come from. So 
the more data that they can pull from you on on these sorts of things. If you remember years ago, they had this report that like places like Target could tell if you were pregnant before you could because they knew what you were buying and things. <laughs> I bet there's something with LinkedIn where they could tell you you are uh, could be looking for a new job sooner or later based on the activities and things that you're you're doing. And if that is possible and they're feeding that to the recruiting platform in a way to say these are passive lookers because uh, yep. the stats out there are amazing when it shows people engaged at work. It's 70% of people are not engaged at work. So that means yeah. probably two in three people you work with are looking for passively for another gig. And so uh, that's why I'm always like, you know, just because somebody has a job or you know, doesn't mean you should have reached out to them for networking opportunities. So many people think, oh, I lost my job. I got to really ramp up my networking. And it's, well, it's like saying, well, I'm thinking about retirement. Uh, so I'm going to go into partial retirement and then start saving for retirement. Does, yes. It's like that math doesn't make sense to me. I tell people when they land, I would really appreciate you connecting back with me and hopefully we communicate in between anyways. But I'd like to know what worked, what didn't work. But the other part is once you're drinking from the fire hose, we talked about the importance of networking as a part of who you are, not just to get this next job. Yeah. And so I say there's four reasons why you should keep doing it. One is, why don't you be the person that pays it forward? And when someone else is looking and you're the one that's working, you take the time to meet with them. Number two, you could tell your employer, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm also going to proactively try to meet people that do what I do or do what our company does. So I'm going to sharpen the saw. Number three is I meet with these people that are in transition and we have openings. I've got a bench of people that I've already bent, vetted, you know, that I can refer in. And number four is for you. The only way to hear about that next, and like we already talked about, the next opportunity is if you're out there and active. So what I say is when you're done drinking from the fire hose, once you carve out two hours on one particular day, if it's Thursday morning at 8 and 9 a.m., and that's just reserved for networking. And just make it a part of who you are. Yeah. And the important thing that I talk about a lot with folks in conjunction with what you're just saying there is about that commitment to it is also communicating that you're what you're doing. So one thing I do with my family, for example, is, I, is that when I, 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 we have a family calendar and I put some events and things on there that are networking, it's like way further out. And we talk about why this is important that I'm investing this time in here. And yes, you're gonna have to pick up the kids today. And this and that, because this is an investment of this time that I'm doing. So it, you've gotta be planful for it. And then, when I was an employee at a company and I would do these sorts of things, I would communicate with my boss like, hey, I'm going to this event. Are we going to be hiring anytime soon or whatever? I, I want to talk great about the company and I want to meet people. Like I would be very deliberate and intentional about uh, the support, the immediate support network around me from both my company and from my family about what I was up to and why I was doing it, which actually made networking that much easier. Because I hear so many people say, well, what if my boss caught me going to one of those networking events? And, oh, and I got to pick up the kids that day and I, I don't have any time to go. And it's like, well, we, let's create a plan for that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Do you, how do you carve out that time? Do you, are you very uh, segmented? Like you said, do you try to say this time this week is where I'm really going to have some, um, real focus time for this work? Do you spread it out like peanut butter? What works good for you? No, I, I block it. My calendar has permanent blocks in it. So I should do some different type of networking uh, or the context of it. But mm -hmm. uh, for example, the transition, meeting with people that are in transition, trying to see where I can be helpful, that's all blocked in, in to my calendar. So nothing else can invade that space. And then it doesn't invade the other space in my calendar either. Yeah, because I can, yeah, it can get confusing and can bleed over yep. because I do as part of my networking, I do a lot of business development too for our organization. Plus I help a lot of leaders in transition, much like yourself. And I do a lot of career coaching as well. And uh, you, when you're context switching all day, it can be very exhausting. The more you block it out, right. the more you block it out, yeah. the better. I use a program, a software called Calendly 
that Same allows here. me to share a link with folks that is during certain times of the week where I do have that focus time sort of blocked off so they can only schedule that time with me during them. But it is also at their convenience, like what works in their schedule and things like that. So so there's ways and there's tools out there that can help you sort of manage your networking so it doesn't feel like networking is happening to you. I use the same program as well. So, yeah. And, uh, and again, like the, some of these things that people use as part of their job, these things can come in real handy for the business of you, for Brett Inc. <laughs> oh, yeah, Brett. exactly. Well, let's talk about 2024 in uh, the landscape, right? So uh, earlier this year, we had tons of big tech layoffs, right? Or the end of last year into early this year, we had sweeping layoffs everywhere. And it's kind of slowed mm-hmm. down uh, for the most part. And I'm seeing more and more uh, jobs being, uh, I'm seeing more and more people in my network grabbing onto work. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the bar move up and to the right a bit. So if I was to, if I was to, if I was listening to this show, Brent, and I was thinking about, okay, well, it's the holidays. I'm going to kind of chill out on my job search right now. And I'm going to hit the hard ground running hard in January. What would be like some of the top things that you would tell me to think about or do or exercise? I guess the first question would be why? Why are we slowing down? I get so one of the thoughts, and you'll concur with this, right? I mean, once you start talking to people at a company about an opening that may be career forwarding for you, it is very easy for that to take 90 days. So for every week you decide right now to take a hiatus, then throw that on top of the three months that you're probably going to take start to finish. So, and I would also, a lot of people say that. So this to me becomes a perfect opportunity where people are probably going to have extra time because the rest of your competition, if you will, if they're thinking that and you're not, well, you're just ahead of the game. Yep. I love it. Yeah, exactly. This is, uh, I get uh, many people sort of have this myth that People don't hire around the holidays, which is absolutely untrue. Uh, To your point, sometimes I can even get more time with some of these folks during this time because they do have less B2B sort of meetings and and things. And they have some more time for an early morning coffee before dropping off the kids or after dropping off the kids or things like that. So, and to be honest, like I've, uh, I've found some real luck with some folks on early Saturday mornings and people might shudder like, a Saturday, yeah. like a sacred day. But if you can get it and you get there 7.30 to 8.30, you got your whole day ahead of you. 7.30, mm-hmm. 8.30, have some coffee, meet with that person somewhere close to where they're at and make it convenient for them. And why not? And I would also add too, right? Life doesn't stop. So what about the person that just announced, hey, I'm going to retire on December 31st or they just put in their two weeks today? Or whatever the reason is that an opening just happened today. Now, maybe there isn't a job opening officially out there, Mm -hmm. but you got to believe that the person that is doing the hiring is thinking about it right now. And if all of a sudden they can have just a conversation with someone that they unexpectedly find is a great candidate, you know, why not? And that's how I'm seeing a lot of jobs happening, especially in more, I would say, either senior positions or sometimes even more strategic positions is where it is not where they, of course, they're going to do what a business does and put together a job description and probably put a posting up and and things like that. But the people that are getting the first door interview, the first in line, the interviews are the <laughs> people that know somebody. And that isn't because, and some people will maybe argue and be like, well, yeah, because they went to high school or college with them. or thing. No, not necessarily. It could just be that somebody actually showed that they were interested past what, with the job posting. They wanted to know more about the company. They wanted to know more about this or that or the other thing. Because if they were going to invest the next five, 10 years of their life into an organization, you might want to suspect that person was doing a little bit more than just blind sending a, a resume. I get so many of these screenshots people send over. Oh, there's 300 candidates for this this job that I've applied yes. and so on and so forth. That is, yeah, I'm sure. I call that the electronic lottery. Yeah. And the odds are just the same as the real lottery. So 
It is yep. better, just like you said. I mean, it, I, I can't even think of the last time someone contacted back or closed the route back with me and said, hey, I just landed a job through applying blind. I mm-hmm. can't think of it. But I can I think can't. of plenty of people that say, hey, Brent, you introduced me to this person who introduced me to this person. And then maybe it was four dots that connected and then they landed. That's how it happens. Yep. Especially in, like I said, again, like nobody's ever gotten their dream job from a resume. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's through these power of connections and these other things. And the other thing is that people also assume that we're kind of in this permission-based world, right? Where it's like the employer has a lot of authority and these other things that we have to kind of follow this ceremony in order to get a job there and have them pay me money to do work for them versus this idea of I could actually target places that I really, I align with their values and the work they do and these things. And I could start actively networking with people in those organizations, in the roles that they're in. I'm sure you've gotten this too before, Brett, where I've talked to a number of people over the last few years that are like, I want to get into the technology space. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And do you even know what that means? Have you, are you building your network into that new industry that you're interested in? And, uh, and so people that are looking to make a change, you're, mm-hmm. they always say you're the five people closest to you are like kind of what makes up who you are. Uh, so if that's true, then you probably should look around and change who those people are if you want to personally change, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can make your networking directional whether it's directional down the lane that you've been in, you know, directional down the industry you've been in for a, a position up or pivot into another wing. But the lanes then are the people that you need to meet. And what do they look like? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And again, like we are out there trying to make ourselves attractive to potential uh, hiring managers and those other sorts of people. So Both you and I, before we started this, like we were sharing some people that are very good with LinkedIn marketing and those types of things. And I always suggest that to job seekers, like maybe follow some of these LinkedIn marketers, see some of the tricks that they're doing to get people interested in their content and their profiles and these things. You could probably find some hints that would help you improve your LinkedIn profile or how you're actually using LinkedIn. Now, again, you're not selling a product or some sort of online course or anything. You're selling yourself in a way. and, And there's... There's nobody who can sell you better than you can. So, and uh, and that's the one thing I talk about in my book is that you have a reputation. And so either you own it and you cultivate it or somebody else is going to for you. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're going to, however people are talking about you when you're not around, they're all, that's happening. So if you have some impact on that's great. But if you're like, no... Because I, well, I don't like the idea of personal brand and I don't want to put myself out there, Brent. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I, to me, yeah, just like a LinkedIn is, a, is like a U Inc landing page, right? And it can just, it can be all professional, but get it out there. It, it, talk about your accomplishments. What have you yeah. done? And it needs to sell the future value of you. When I bring you a board and I make this investment, what is the ROI in the future I'm going to get? Because at my company, we've always, and at the company I worked at prior to starting this business, it was, we always looked at, we always talked about it. We hired people for their trajectory, right? Not where they're at right now, but what are the potential that these people have? Because if we marry their experience with where we're going as an organization, um, How do those two add more rocket fuel? Yeah, it's a win-win, right? Which is what you're hoping for. You're not hoping to like add on some dead weight that you're going to drag along with you, right? And it's really hard to find out if you're you're dead weight or rocket fuel by just some uh, a resume, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'd love the idea of using LinkedIn and these types of things to uh, stay in top of mind with your network and reminding people of what your value is, what your values are too, right? The types of things that you comment on and that you like and that you reshare are signaling to people that these are the things that I'm interested in. These are the things that I, uh, when you think of this thing, you should be thinking about me too. 
And that's where I've seen so many people find their ways into the right networks uh, because they are signaling to other people like, hey, I might not have 20 years experience like you do in this thing, but I am a student of this industry. I am a student of this skill and I am sharing and I'm, I'm, I'm following it and I'm, uh, I'm part of that community. And, and you'll see quickly how people will start to as associate you with that. And then yes. those opportunities can come from there. Yeah, I think of it, when someone wants to be active on LinkedIn, one of the things they say is that don't worry about your impressions and how many people are going to see it. Just think of it as there are conversations going on every second, a vast amount. Find the conversation you're interested in. And obviously, it should be something you know professional that you can display your knowledge, your experience, and join the conversation, contribute to it. You can contribute to it by questioning what the author said in a professional mm -hmm. way, maybe challenging the ranking, maybe adding uh, something to the ranking, maybe asking an opposing question or confirm with a resource or suggested resource for whoever the author of the post was, but just join the conversation. It's easy, right? We, it's just like going to a networking event and hearing the conversation you're interested in and stepping into the circle and contributing to it. You just right. need to find your circle. Yeah. And your circle isn't just going to show up and bite you. Like you've got to go out and look for it. They don't know you're out there looking. <laughs> so they're not, you're right. not going to get an invite. Yep. You know? So here I would suggest is find the hashtags that represent potentially mm -hmm. the conversation you're interested in. Any companies that you're interested in that you that create the conversation, follow the company because you're telling the algorithm, send more. If there's human beings out there, so let's see, uh, like Gary, I'm going to pronounce his name, Robert Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk, I think. Vaynerchuk. Vaynerchuk, thank you. So if you send a connection request to Gary, he's probably not going to accept it. I'm just guessing. But you could, you can go to Gary's, the bell on his profile and ring the bell and tell the algorithm, send me all posts or content mm -hmm. or conversations that Gary starts. And then that'll come to your home feed and you can join the conversation. Yeah, exactly. That's the one thing that's the, uh, it's not the not so secret hack is the LinkedIn search bar will give you a lot more insight on what's happening um, than uh, the job board, for example. And I see it, I mention it to people all the time. It's not necessarily the hidden job market, but one of the sneaky job markets is hashtag job markets because they don't want to pay for the LinkedIn job posting, but they will post it on LinkedIn. And then just hashtag jobs, hiring, whatever. And uh, hey, I've shown it to people and I've seen, I've literally seen people's eyes bug out. Oh my God, there is way more jobs for this role than I thought there was. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're yeah. just in the job board, if you're just looking at people that are paying LinkedIn for the job board, then you've already cut, you sold yourself short. Yep. Now you're so right. That's a great tip. And, uh, and to your point, if you're looking for those communities, because I've had people say, again, lots of people argue, well, it's like Facebook and people, I'm like, you got to curate your feed better than unfollow people, look for, you got to spend a little time curating your feed. And I see people do it on Instagram and Facebook all the time. Why can't you do it on LinkedIn? <laughs> yes. You help the algorithm help you find your conversation. Exactly. Yes. I love that. I love that quote. I'm using, I'm going to use that. Uh, all right, Brad. So if I want to get in touch with you, if I want to find out more about the work you do and who you do it for, where's a great way to get in touch with you? I'm guessing LinkedIn's a great place. Uh, I think that would be, yeah. My contact info's on there. Yeah. Brent Fuller, B as in Victor, O-E-L-L-E-R. Yeah. That's DM great. me and I, I'd love to start it. I'll put uh, a link to Brent's uh, profile in the dis podcast description. So check it out and connect with him because he's got lots of great ideas around this stuff. So Brad, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I appreciate you joining me for this discussion. I'm humbled to be asked. Thank you. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to this episode of Schmidt List. The stories shared by our guests are genuinely inspiring and offer insightful knowledge. It's important to remember that success doesn't happen overnight and requires collaboration, learning, and perseverance. 
If you want to broaden your professional connections, check out Kurt's book, The Little Book of Networking, How to Build Your Career One Conversation at a Time on Amazon. Please stay connected with all things Schmidt List on social media, leave a review for the podcast, and join our community of like-minded entrepreneurs. Thank you for being part of Schmidt List. Keep innovating, collaborating, and chasing your entrepreneurial dreams.